Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, today we have a fascinating video, the strangest proof that the Quran is from Allah by Arabic 101. This is of course the main claim of Islam that the Quran is God's word. In Christianity, Jesus is the word, so therefore he becomes God's word. In Islam, it is different. The Quran is eternal. The Quran is the word of God. The Quran is the miracle that anybody can read. So therefore, this should be an absolutely amazing watch for Muslims and non-Muslims alike. Let's have a look. Every single book in the world must have an author. Sure. The Noble Quran is therefore no exception. It is a book, so it must have an author. All Muslims believe that Allah is the one who revealed the Quran to Prophet Muhammad. Peace and blessings be upon him. But those who do not believe so, they think otherwise. But who do they think wrote the Qur'an then? I mean, if they don't believe that the Qur'an is from... There are many different theories. Some people believe that Muhammad wrote it. Some people believe that many different people wrote it. And some people believe as well that Muhammad copied it from the Bible and other religious books and therefore compiled the Qur'an. Those are the theories. Ah, In a nutshell. And who is it from then? Because there aren't really many options, since Prophet Muhammad was the one who dictated the words to his companions, the writers of Wahi, to write it down. You wouldn't believe what kind of theories are out there. Some people even believe that Muhammad didn't even exist. So, if they don't think it's from Allah, then it should be one of these four options, simply because there isn't any other possibility. So, it should either be that... Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, authored the Qur'an himself. Yeah. The second possibility would be that he used the previous books, like the Bible or the Torah, exactly. to write the Qur'an. Third, a Christian or a Jewish person had helped Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, to write the Qur'an. True, or that's fourth, a theory as well. It was Satan who had helped the Prophet to write the Qur'an uh. and tell him about the news of former nations that he hadn't witnessed. Absolutely, I forgot about that theory. Some people think that Muhammad channeled the devil himself. So these four are the only possibilities there are. If the Qur'an was not from Allah, there are no other options as to where the Qur'an came from. So, Roughly, as I said, there is another option as well that multiple people actually compiled the Qur'an. If we can disprove or refute these four possibilities, then we're left with the only remaining possibility, which is that it is from Allah. So let's look at these possibilities one by one and see how they stack up. Sure. First, Prophet Muhammad was the one who authored the Quran himself. And if you do think so, then how can you explain the following problems? The first problem is the style of writing. We do know how the Prophet talked and what his style looked like. How? We do indeed have thousands of ahadith, which are the quotations and sayings of the Prophet. So we know it's. I can most definitely agree that the hadith and the Quran reads very, very different. Exactly what the style of these sayings look like. And it doesn't take an expert to realize the big difference between the style of the hadith yeah. of the Prophet, peace be upon him, and the style of the Qur'an. It clearly shows two distinct styles of writing. The second problem, blaming the Prophet, peace be upon him, in the Qur'an. The Qur'an contains several blaming verses, or in Arabic, ayatul itab, where the Prophet, peace be upon him, is blamed for certain actions, like or يا أيها النبي لما تحرم ما أحل الله لك تبتغي مرضات أزواجك. Or in this example, عبس وتولى 
And there are many other examples belonging to the same category. So if it was the Prophet himself who wrote the Qur'an, why would he blame himself in front of his companions? It is just simply Fair not enough. logical. The third problem is the prophecies. The Qur'an contains many prophecies about many events, some of which actually came true in the time of the Prophet, like the one in Surat Ar-Rum. Or the prophecy about the liberation of Mecca or Fath Mecca in Surat Al Fath. If the Prophet wrote the Qur'an himself, how could he have known things that were going to happen in the future? Wouldn't it be a big gamble losing your status among your companions if he predicted that something would happen and it didn't happen? The prophetic aspect, however, could be blamed on the devil as the video itself said in the beginning. One option would be that Muhammad received the Quran from the devil. So if that is true, then of course the devil could have given Muhammad prophecies that are accurate about the future. The fourth problem is critique here. the delay of revelations. In certain incidents, the wahi or the revelation was delayed. Like when a Jewish man came to the Prophet, asking him about the people of the cave. But the Prophet said that he would answer him tomorrow, expecting the wahi, but without saying insha'Allah. And so the wahi was delayed. Also, when his own wife was falsely accused in her honor, the wahi was delayed as well, which was a very difficult time for the Prophet, peace be upon him. If he was the one making the Qur'an, wouldn't it have been more convenient for him to just come up with an answer in these situations and clear his name and his wives among his companions? These were not the only two incidents, but there are other situations in which the Prophet couldn't give a direct answer because he had to wait for the wahi. Problem number five, the challenge. The Qur'an contains many verses that challenge anyone who doesn't believe it. The challenge was to produce anything like it. The Qur'an even challenges Absolutely humans correct. and the jinn for that. If the Prophet, a human, had made the Qur'an himself, why would he risk embarrassing himself needlessly by challenging all humans and jinn to produce something like it? Problem number six the personal information of the Prophet. The Qur'an contains no personal information about the Prophet, not his life, his children, or his wives. His name was mentioned in the entire Qur'an only four times, which is much fewer than the mention of other Prophets. Like Moses, who was mentioned 134 times, and his story came in 34 surahs of the Qur'an. Jesus was also mentioned dozens of times, Abraham, Noah, Joseph, and other prophets. So if he was the one who had made the Qur'an himself, wouldn't he have given himself more credit, or at least talked about his struggles more often? So as we can see here, this maybe, first possibility... Maybe, maybe. It could have been, of course, a strategy as well. I'm just playing devil's advocate here. ...that the prophet came up with the Qur'an himself is actually illogical and full of problems and questions for which there are no answers. Conclusion, it is impossible that the Prophet could have written the Qur'an himself. But could it be that he used the help of others? 
Well, then let's look at possibility number two. The Prophet used previous books like the Bible or the Torah to write the Qur'an. And this possibility could easily be refuted because the Prophet was illiterate, which means that he could not read or write. And even if we assume that he was not illiterate, where would he have got hold of the Bible or the Torah in Arabic? Did you know that the first Arabic translation of the Bible... So from what I've read in the biography of Prophet Muhammad is that he traveled to Syria with his uncle Abu Talib and even as a young child he already was in contact with Christians. That of course then could lead to the assumption that those Christians taught Muhammad the Bible. ...was made in the 9th century, which is a hundred years after the death of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Then how could yes, he... Yes, as a compiled book, that is correct. But nevertheless, you still had early Christians. He have read it. Added to that, and until around the 18th century, the church was essentially hiding the Bible from common people and forbade its translation. So the Bible was not just readily available, let alone a translation thereof. This leaves us with no other conclusion than that the Prophet could not have used the previous books to write the Qur'an. This possibility is off the table. Moving yes, the direct books with that I agree, but as I said, he could have learned from Christians. ...to possibility number three. If the Prophet didn't write the Qur'an himself, he didn't read previous books, was it then a Jew or a Christian that helped the Prophet write the Qur'an? Yeah, for example. If we sift through all the authenticated hadith, you will only find a single hadith about the encounter between the Prophet and someone called Waraqa ibn Nawfal, a Christian. However, the Prophet met Waraqa ibn Nawfal after the Wahi or the revelation came to him, not before. But that then would more, be the second Christian. As I said, as a child, he already met Christians. Or, Based on authenticated hadith, Waraqa even testified that Muhammad, peace be upon him, was the Prophet. So how could he have been the one who would help him to write the Qur'an? And even if it wasn't Waraqa sure, and it was wouldn't. some other Christian or Jew who would help the Prophet to write the Qur'an, how could they allow him to write verses like these? لَقَدْ كَفَرَ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا إِنَّ اللَّهَ هُوَ الْمَسِيحُ بْنُ مَرْيَمْ Or a verse like this. لَتَجِدَنَّ أَشَدَّ النَّاسِ عَدَاوَةً لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا الْيَهُودَ وَالَّذِينَ أَشْرَكُوا How can it make sense that a Jew or a Christian would help the Prophet write something like that? This problem leaves us no choice. But to say that it is impossible... The explanation for this would be that we are talking about Gnostic Christians, the early Christians, some of them that didn't believe in Jesus as God and therefore would of course subscribe to such an idea. They would go against the Trinitarian Christians. It's possible for anyone to have helped the Prophet... It's not as simple as the video makes the it to be. Now, moving to the final possibility. Since the Prophet was able to tell prophecies and new things a human could not have known, then it must be Satan who would help him write the Qur'an. And this is indeed one of the most illogical possibilities since we, as Muslims, are taught to seek refuge from Satan before starting <laughs> to recite the Qur'an. Yes, absolutely correct. فَإِذَا قَرَأْتَ الْقُرْآنَ فَاسْتَعِذْ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ Yes, absolutely, man. And this is what happened to me when I read the Quran for the first time and I read the passage that I seek refuge in God from Satan. I'm seeking refuge from God to get protected from Satan. So obviously, when you're seeking refuge in God, away from Satan, this is how you start the book. It cannot possibly be a devil's book. It doesn't make any sense whatsoever. 
especially if you look at satanic rituals when they try to summon demons when they try to summon satan they have to of course seek refuge in satan they of course have to call out his name and not god's name it doesn't make any sense verses in the quran declaring satan as the mortal foe of the human yes so how could it be possible that satan helped the prophet to write verses cursing satan himself and declaring him as the enemy. Yeah, of course, Christian evangelicals will say that this is the devil's trick. You will curse Satan, but ultimately you will do his deed. But if we look at how the Quran transformed the Arabian Peninsula, we of course see the exact opposite. It doesn't make any sense. The book calls you to pray, to fast, to worship God. Plan to tempt humans and expose himself like that. Therefore, it is impossible for Satan to have held the Prophet write the Qur'an. And now that all four possibilities out there are off the table, we are left with the only possibility that it is from the one with unlimited omniscient knowledge that the Qur'an is from Allah. And what better way to end this video then with Allah's words addressing those who deny the Qur'an. Innahu la qawlu rasoolin kareem Dhi quwwatin inda dhi al-arsh makin Muta'in thamma ameen وما صاحبكم بمجنون ولقد رآه بالأفق المبين وما هو على الغيب بضنين وما هو بقول شيطان الرجيم فأين تذهبون إن هو إلا ذكر للعالمين لمن شاء منكم أن يستقيم وما تشاءون إلا أن يشاء الله رب العالمين Alright guys, and this is it for today's video, long enough as it is, absolutely interestingly compiled, however, as I said during the video already, I am not 1000% convinced in the method that this person used here to convey the legitimacy of the Quran. I believe that he only scratched the surface and some of his arguments were self-refuting. This, however, not to downplay the legitimacy of the Quran, this is simply a critique of this particular video. Video. I urge everyone to read the Quran by themselves because if we assume that it is the word of God, then it should be powerful enough to do the transformation within us. Ultimately, the Quran states as well that Allah guides who he wills and therefore no amount of proof will be sufficient for somebody that will not believe. All right, guys, but this is it for today's video. If you liked it, leave it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, guys, please do so. And if you want to support this channel, all the links are in the description box, Patreon links and grass-fed organ meats, all in the description box for you to check out and to support this channel that way. Thank you very much. As always, may God bless you all. Much love and peace.